when we're experiencing the discomfort or the struggle or the contraction, we judge it and then we want to move away from it. And then we go on the band of the fix it, Mm -hmm. um, which just leads to more judgment. Welcome, bienvenue, bonjour to the beautiful Soul Ed Life podcast. For women who desire to awaken their heartfelt desires, trust themselves fully, and connect with their soul's purpose through beauty. Oniva, let's go. Hello, hello, bonjour, and welcome to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. <sighs> you know. You know when you know when you know when people are brought into your life. The guest that I have today, it's funny. We get a lot of inquiries inside of Elegant Femme for people desiring to be on the podcast. And I appreciate that. Love it. Love every single inquiry. And sometimes there's just something in an email that has me respond with a yes. And it's not often. And I don't usually or ever really know what the yes is, except that it's a yes. So this woman landed in my, my email box and it was a yes. And I started doing a little bit of research. And before I even introduce her fully, I want to read something to you that says it all. So she doesn't know I'm going to do this, but she's not going to be surprised. I'm going to do this either. I know from what I know of her. So on her website, I highlighted this and I'm, I'm inviting all of you to feel this. It's so absolutely gorgeous. You are a beautiful empowered, radiant drop of God. You are a divine spiritual being on a human adventure. You are here to express the magnificence that is you. You are here to learn to respect, honor, and love your sweet self and your whole life. I am here to remind you how. Ah, so with that, <laughs> and I say that, Donna, even to you, because I feel like sometimes we write things and we know, like we're in essence and in frequency and connection with that. But when someone reads it back to us, sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, that's me. That's me. Are you grabbing a tissue? <laughs> I love you. Welcome to the beautiful Soul End Life podcast, Donna Bond, sister, mother, a connection from many, many lifetimes. Now I know. I am so happy we reconnected. Hi. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. My God. Hello. 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 So wonderful to be here. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> this is what I mean. Like, what you know, like, holy fuck, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Even better. I love this. It's like, I went to your site and I saw your face literally. And I was like, oh yes, that was first. I just saw you and it was a yes. And then I read and I was like, but yes, of course. And then as we were connecting before I pressed record, you said to me, did you go to USM? It's like, the truth is the truth is the truth. And just for everyone to know, USM is where I got my master's degree in spiritual psychology years and years ago. And this is where I want to go together, Donna. Just, I actually, I don't know where I want to go together. I want to hand it over to you and whatever's present and on your heart that you want to share. Let's just go there. I love what you're doing. I love what you're up to. I love the intention and the message behind this podcast. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I like, I think I'm what having a feeling. <laughs> I love you so much. Let it flow. Like there's something obviously like birthing. There's something the happening. Country. Yeah, there's something happening. Oh, babe. <laughs> um, this is what you're doing. Living a soul-led life. Why is everyone not doing that? Why is everyone not doing that? And it's <laughs> the reason I'm so emotional is because I've been caught in this web of 
How do I want to show up? How do I want to stand forward? How can I bring more clarity to the work that I do, to the incredible transformations that I lead women through? And there's so much noise and there's so much BS and there's so much confusion out there. And at the end of the day, this is exactly what I help women do. I help them get in touch with the highest part of themselves and live from there. And I have taken action on example after example after example in my life in doing this in a way that has been extraordinary. (laughs) It has been extraordinary. I married some guy off the internet that I had just met, who was living in a different city, in a different state. We just celebrated our 15-year wedding anniversary. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You know, I am a California girl all day long. I like high heel shoes and Louis Vuitton bags. And I am living in the middle of Central America in the rainforest of Costa Rica because the universe went to great lengths to unfold this path before me in a way that I just had to keep taking my hands off the wheel, in a way that I had to just keep surrendering and surrendering and surrendering. And at the time, none of it made sense. Enrolling myself in USM didn't make any sense. I have made these huge and courageous leaps into the unknown, into the divine unknowing. And that is the scariest place and the most thrilling place, the most exciting place, the most fulfilling place that we can live from. And so I'm in this sort of like mess in who am I and how, because I continue to change and evolve and grow and transform because I'm on the leading edge of my own work, right? And I am here to do the work and I know how to do the work and I know how to lead other people through doing the work, And this is the work to to find out what your soul has invited you into and to go do that. (laughs) That's it. That's all I got, Tara. (laughs) I love it. Amen, amen, amen. And I also so acknowledge like how much it touches you like how devoted you are to the conversation. What is that like outpouring of emotion that comes up inside of you? What, well, what it's, is, it's a revelation. That? Like it's a revelation in a way. It's a realization that is like, oh, so obvious. You know, spirit's like, duh, hello. <laughs> and, you know, you read this exquisite thing, which is actually on the back of my book, Original Wisdom. And this is the second time that someone has sort of reflected this to me, not necessarily that excerpt, but the page that my book is on and what that is about. And and that book is a love letter to Ron and Mary. It's a love letter to all of the women who have struggled with the masks of who we are trying to be, who we think we're supposed to be, trying to get it right, trying to get it perfect. And I am so grateful to be living like an exquisite, exquisite life and have the privilege and the honor of working with exquisite women 
and have possibilities of meeting women like you and being invited to an exquisite show of this caliber. And now I'm falling all over my damn self. Oh my gosh, it's so real. It's like, do you know how beautiful it is to witness another woman? I'm going to say woman, but I mean truly soul. When we see each other and we're like, oh my God, can you believe it? Like we're here. We're like, we said yes. We said yes. Yeah, like we, we said, said yes. yes at this level. And we don't just say yes once, we say yes again and again and again and again and again. And when we have the reflection inside of us where that yes meets the next yes, this is what I see inside of you right now. Mm. It's that yes meeting the next yes of like, I am here for this, God. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. soul. Thank you, and life. Thank you, love. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. When you were calling in the light, uh, you spoke of withholding and that is just such an invitation for me. I'm a type one on the Enneagram. So I have to like, get it right. I got to have my shit together all the time. And so withholding is very real for me, yeah. even in a, like an unconscious way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just been a behavioral challenge for me. So for you to pull that thread, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and you know, I, I love it so much that you're so real in saying that because you know, I, I, I when I set an intention, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what's going to come forward. And even the way we came on together, you know, it's that letting go for all of us, me too, right? This, and which was funny. So let me share a little bit of backstory for you and for everyone. I thought usually I'll do my makeup. I'll get ready for a podcast interview. I was sitting out in the sun and it was clear, like, no, stay here a little bit longer. Let's meditate. And so I chose consciously, I'm still in my sweats. I'm going to work out after this. I don't have any makeup on. When my husband came upstairs, like, aren't you, don't you have a podcast at 10? Why aren't you ready? I'm like, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I, can, I am absolutely ready. I'm showing up this way. No withholding. Mm. no withholding because I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like when we, when we allow ourselves to come into this level of awareness, the withholding actually becomes painful. It's mm. like this buildup inside of us. What am I doing? Why am I holding on to anything? Like why? You know, what is there to hold on to anyway? I know people say, like, thank you for holding space for me. And I've heard that a lot through the years. My feeling inside is like, I'm not holding anything for you. Actually, I don't want to hold anything. That's not mm, my role. Love that. That's God's role. Like, I, I'm here to be, to, to love, to exist. And I do not get this perfect at all. Or I always do. One or the other. <laughs> Right? But I'm not here to hold anything. <sighs> you know? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are a gorgeous freaking soul. My goodness. My well, my soul has been uh, taking up even more residence in this frame, in this vessel, um, which is really one of the reasons why I came to Costa Rica, even though I didn't know that at the time. Um, but being immersed in nature, in the way that mm -hmm. I am, every single day yeah. um, is so revealing, you know, it's so revealing and it's so, mm. it's such an incredible mirror, the contrast of it all. And one of my early discoveries here, cause it's, I mean, you know, it rains for weeks at a time and the sun doesn't come out. Like the sun doesn't come out for so long that when the sun does come out, 
you, you fall on your knees and say, I'll never take you for granted again. <laughs> but discovering the contrast and recognizing that I like it, that I love the contrast. And I think it's just such a beautiful metaphor for life. And it's a beautiful metaphor as a contemplation because, you know, when we're in it, we're usually trying to get out of it. When we're experiencing the discomfort or the struggle or the contraction, we judge it and then we want to move away from it. And then we go on the band of the fix it, um, which just leads to more judgment. And so Costa Rica has really taught me to honor the contrast Mm -hmm. in so many ways. Yeah. I love that so much. And it's so easy to forget, isn't it? Because when we're in that contrast and contrast from my definition, I'd love to hear yours, like just anything that feels like it's not where we want to be, right? The contrast of the rain versus the sun, the pain versus the sweetness, whatever that might be, where our ego says, no, (laughs) I don't, I do not choose this. I want that. This is not where I want to be. I want to be there. And it's so easy in my experience to like forget when we're in that, how fruitful, like really not to, not to try to play a mind fuck on ourselves of like, oh yeah, it's, it's going to be good. No, like the real truth of when we're in that space, like there is something here for me. There is really something here for me. How can I allow, expand, and melt into what truly is Mm. without even knowing that there's going to be something better on the other side, like knowing that there's something here now? I think for me, um, I often find myself on the pendulum of whatever the polarity is. And I know this is the business of the ego, right? The land of the land of the ego, the swinging pendulum. And if I can just get the pendulum to land in the middle, then I'm at the zero point and there's no resistance and there's no judgment. There's only neutrality. There's only equanimity and how easy it is to take the elevator up and then see our life from this beautiful perspective. And, you know, there's a real part of me that wants that to be a permanent place. Mm. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Yes. And that would really require me to not be human. Mm. Damn it. (laughs) <laughs> and un- unfortunately, unfortunately, that's not the program here, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So instead of like being pissed off about the swing of the pendulum yeah. and the contrast or the polarity of this experience that we are in here at this time on planet Earth, yeah. how can we just love it all. Yeah, so true. So true. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. And is this like the context of your book? Is that like the leading edge of this conversation for you? Or is the book the foundation and now you're on the next kind of like leaping off point of a conversation that you want to be sharing? Well, we're, we're at the leaping off point. It's funny that you use those exact words. Oh, it's not funny. Um, my first book, Original Wisdom, Harness the Power of the Authentic You, was about leaving my framework, leaving the context of everything that I knew or that I thought life was about and finding my way here 
um, and where's here, you know, my definition of original wisdom, even though this is something that we can't really put a definition on. Um, but my definition of original wisdom is the inherent intelligence in all beings that is rooted in unconditional love. And so my work is really assisting people to have an experience of that, to have an experience of themselves mm. as unconditional love. And that mm. requires us to step out of the polarity. It requires us to not get caught up in the contrast or not get caught up in the resistance of the Ooh. contrast. Yes, 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 that. <laughs> right, the rub of the contrast. Yeah. And to be in that flow state, that feminine yin receiving mm -hmm. and giving, right? It's the back and it's the forth. It's I'm being shown the infinity symbol right now. It's like, oh yeah, that's so delicious and lovely. Being at that center point, accessing that original wisdom is a place of neutrality. It's a place of equanimity. It is that zero point. You know, it's the middle of the infinity symbol. My leaping off point is my next book. Book is being done, but uh, it's called Spiritual Ambition, and it's really about this inner drive that we all have to awaken into this love, whether we consciously recognize that or not. Yes. You know, that's, that's so powerful. It brings me back to something you said in the very, very beginning when we opened. With a lot of emotion and tenderness inside, you were saying, like, why isn't everybody living their soul-led life? And I feel like... And I'd love for you to speak to this, given where you're leaping off. I feel like everyone is. They just don't know. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> and the awakening with which you're speaking of, and I find it also so fascinating that you utilize ambition inside mm. of that. And the opportunity for us to answer that inner calling and yet at the same time, at least for me personally, part of my journey has been to let go of the intensity of the pressure I have felt inside to fulfill my ambition, mm. my soul's calling, you know, that, that discernment of when it's coming from the ego of you haven't done enough, there's more for you to do, you're not there yet, versus this beautiful resting and residing in the inner knowing that it is inevitable. Right. There's no urgency. And at the same time, there's no withholding. Right. There's right. no force. And at the same time, letting go of the resistance. You know, I feel like it's such a beautiful dance. Yeah, it's a beautiful, it's the swing of the pendulum. That's the beautiful dance. Yeah. 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 So this is your next book. Tell me more about this. Is there anything else you want to share about it? Well, what I have discovered um, on my own path of awakening is that with every courageous leap I make, I embody more of my soul. And so because I've made several, as I, you know, briefly mentioned, I have a theory about this. And so that's what I'm writing about. And I, I feel like our journey through life, everyone's journey through life has these parallel tracks that intersect and one track is love and the other track is expression. And 
throughout the course of our life with all of the choices we make, any of the decisions that we follow through with or don't follow through with, give us the opportunity for the crisscross of that of those tracks. And it's all in a spiral, right? So there's this expansion and this evolution that is naturally taking place as we're uh, moving ourselves through paths of expression that bring us deeper levels of loving and paths of loving that bring us to greater levels of expression. And so it's this dance. It's the stance. And that is what the book is about. And very similar to original wisdom in that um, it's a teaching memoir. It's the stories of my life. It's the stories of, you know, original wisdom is how I left the corporate arena. Uh, Really big life, big job, big direct deposit paycheck, all of that. (laughs) Yes, yes. My way to a life of service. Um, you know, through coaching, which Mm -hmm. if, if someone had told me at the time, you know, you're going to sit in these beautiful, open hearted, vulnerable, uh, intimate conversations with women, I would have said, oh yeah, there's no fucking way that that's happening. (laughs) (laughs) But I was shown otherwise. Yeah. I was shown otherwise. And um, again, it was a moment of taking my hands off the wheel. And this, I am very strong willed, very strong headed. Um, I have a big personality. I have a lot of opinions about the world and things as they are. And so for me to relinquish all of that and to yield to greater forces than myself, to yield to my own soul's wisdom has been a journey, has been a journey as it is for all of us, as it is for all of us. It definitely is. And I, I laugh and love when you say like that direct deposit, right? Right in your bank account. And one of the things we talk about a lot inside a beautiful soul Ed life podcast is this integration with the physical and the spiritual and really letting go of any kind of guilt for desiring beautiful things in our lives, whether it be high levels of abundance, whether it be a Celine handbag, whether it be like whatever it is. So what has your experience been of allowing that for yourself, allowing yourself the and, the service and the beautiful income where our egos can go to one of two extremes, right? You're either good and you're doing spiritual work and that's all, or you're bad and you love money and love beautiful things and love material things and right this extreme that the ego tends to showcase for us what's been your experience with that gosh you know i am so grateful i love money and i've always loved it um i happen to think it grows on trees and i do mean (laughs) that literally i do mean that literally Um, And because that has been my belief system, I have had the great privilege and honor of experiencing that. And, you know, it's so interesting that I have never sort of taught an abundance class or Mm -hmm. a prosperity class because I have really quite a bit to share on this topic. Um, I live on two and a half acres of land that was given to me given to me. And I live in a fully paid for home that the money fell out of the sky, enabling us to build this house. So like a lot, I think one of the, one of the opportunities that we often overlook is that spirit works in so many different ways through Mm -hmm. so many different channels. And Abundance is a mindset. 
And so when you're vibrating at the frequency of abundance, it means that you see abundance everywhere. And so it doesn't mean you see money per se everywhere, but I see an abundance of sky out my window, an abundance of ocean before me, an abundance of thread on my carpet. There's an abundance of our consciousness yes. everywhere around us, everywhere present, and it cannot be turned off. It cannot, yes, and it be, ca it cannot be otherwise. It, it cannot that, be otherwise. That is it. That is it. Do you write about this in your book, in your new book? Uh, perhaps I should. I, I'm going to in, just invite you to consider because you came alive in an additional dimension when you started speaking about this. And to me, this is such an important component to the conversation, even of the foundation of innate wisdom. Like we know this and yet we don't allow ourselves oftentimes to remember we get caught in the web of I have to prove, I have to justify, I have to work for, I have to somehow show everyone that it's okay that I live this way. And the way that I'm taught to do that mm. is to work hard, is to sacrifice, is to la 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 la. And this, you know, the, the example that I loved so much is like, I see the, the, the abundance of thread in the carpet. Mm. I mean, these threads of our lives that if we choose to see this golden thread woven through everything, it is everything. what we experience. I love this so much. So yeah, much. I, I was shown this, actually. This is such a crazy, crazy story. So this was my very first women's retreat. I was in Southern California. It was the last morning of the retreat. It was Sunday. It was beautiful. The sun was shining. And I was sort of floating around my backyard. And we had these raised bed gardens. And I was just captivated by this mint plant. And I was like putting my face in this mint plant. And in a, a nanosecond, Tara, in like a clap of thunder for a nanosecond, I was the mint plant. I became the mint plant. And in that moment, as I was the mint plant, I was also the dirt, the air, the sky, the birds, the raised bed garden, Donna Bond, and or otherwise, I was it all in an instant flash. A couple of days later, I was coming back from seeing my coach who was in the Valley in Los Angeles and I was high on life. And the night before I had had this dream about this black car. It was like a matte black. It wasn't shiny. It was like a matte black. And it was like like a 1970s car, even though I can't tell you what it was. And the inside was red leather interior. And it was very specific. And I'm coming back from this session with her and I'm high on life and I'm just really in my element. You know, I'm experiencing the joy that we are, that aliveness, that purpose, that meaning, that yumminess for no particular reason, just like the joy of being alive. When all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, on the highway, as I'm driving, I see this car that was the exact car from my dream from the night before. As I get closer, the license plate says M-N-T plant. No. Plant. No. No. Yes. And so in that moment, I say out loud, there is no spoon. There is no spoon. Like this is all an illusion. This is all make believe. This is all an illusion. And we are shaping it and framing it and evolving it and directing it through our thoughts, 
through our emotions and through our actions, ladies and gentlemen. So that was a very real experience of me recognizing abundance is everywhere. Oh my gosh. Amen. I've, I have never told this story publicly. So there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much for showering truth, which was our intention together before we even started yeah. the press record. This is it. Like that is everything, everything you shared. And that moment, and I've had it, not the whole dream, but that moment with the mint plant and the silence and when we were completely encumbered in the inner knowing of truth, of we are all connected. We are all, 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 that oneness, that unity, that divinity. It's one of the most breathtaking experiences and the opportunity to not try to get back there, to realize that we already always are there, whether or not we are in the conscious awareness of it. Yeah. That's what we get to live into and choose into and remember every single day. And you are such a stunning example of this. I am so freaking grateful that your team reached out with the email that you and I got on, like just all of it signed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been um, very elevating for me personally mm -hmm. on many levels. Um, and some real clarity has been brought forward for me on what it is I'm up to, you know? Yeah. And yeah. there's just like, I feel this reinvigoration around the things I'm already doing but I, I needed, I needed a gentle little kick in the ass. <laughs> you gave it to me, whether you realize it or not. <laughs> so let's talk about this before we go, because my pleasure. <laughs> That's what we're here for together to reflect to each other and to remember, like, remember, remember who you are. Remember, remember that you're who you are. I'm here to show you. Show me. Let's like remember together. You know, that's what it's about. So share with all of us, like, where can women find you? Where can they continue to fall in love with you? Any retreats you have coming up, anything at all that's on your heart, because I know the Elegant Femme community is going to fall in love with you. That's without a doubt. So where can they learn more? Yeah. All the things. Well, I do actually have a women's retreat coming up in the fall in California, um, and it's called Loving Your Sweet Self. So you can go to mm -hmm. lovingyoursweetself.com mm -hmm. and you can find all of the information about the retreat. And it's small. It's intimate. The groups that I work with are intimate. Um, so it's just going to be seven or eight women. And if you want to learn more about me, you can go to donnabond.com and you know, there's all kinds of free classes and yeah. things you can check out and read and learn more. So many Thank you for saying things. yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Truly, truly. An honor, a pleasure, a gift you are to this world, Donna. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And honestly, I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Me love you long time. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You're amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh, Donna, the best is yet to come. Thank, thank you, you Tara. Being yeah. Thank Mwah. You. I love yeah. you. Love you, love, love you. you. Thank you so much. Merci, merci for listening to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. I would love if this message served you, that you support it and share it with other women 
who might benefit from really having their lives in balance with their femtypes. And if you can leave a comment, do a review, I love reading every single one of them. And I would adore if you could take a snapshot of yourself wherever you listen to this episode and post it on social media. My Instagram is elegantfem1 and I'd love to see you, share you, and just celebrate with you as you are moving into creating, experiencing, and claiming your own beautiful soul-led life.